Hi, I'm Jim Furman, um, Manufacturing Coordinator. I'm going to show you how to use properly use a ruler or tape measure. You take the end, the reason a tape measure moves, and like this, people think they're broke, it's not, it's because that's how much, that's how thick it is. It'll move to how thick the tip is. Just letting everybody know that right off the bat. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the part here, the tape measure on the end, make sure it's secure. And then I'm going to make sure everything's straight because a straight line is the best. And then we're going to measure this. So it's 20 and the second decimal or second place over, which is going to be the eighth. We got 16th, eighth. We're back to a 16th, and then it goes to a quarter. That's the increments of how a tape measure grows up. So it's 20 and one eighth from the edge to this edge of the part. And then if I want to find out what the edge to the front part is going to be. It is 13 and a half or 13.5 even. Thanks, Jim. He really covered a lot in that video. Um, one thing he mentioned was how to count fractions on a tape measure or how a tape measure grows up between the numbers and what each of those little marks mean. So on this tape measure between the 3 and the 4, I could just count each of these little lines by sixteenths. 3 and 1 sixteenth, 3 and 2 sixteenths, 3 and 3 sixteenths, 3 and 4 sixteenths, or as you can see, I've only labeled the teeniest marks as sixteenths the next smallest marks as eighths, the next smallest as fourths, one of the largest marks, the one in the middle, as a half, and then the largest marks on the ends are our whole numbers, three and four. And that's because of equivalent fractions. And so instead of counting 3 and 1 sixteenth, 3 and 2 sixteenths, 3 and 3 sixteenths, 3 and 4 sixteenths, we count 3 and 1 sixteenths, and then instead of 2 sixteenths, 1 eighth is the same as 2 sixteenths. And then there's nothing equivalent to 3 sixteenths, so we leave that the same. 1 fourth is the same as 2 eighths and it's also the same as 4 sixteenths. Then we have 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, 7 sixteenths, and then 1 half. 1 half is the same as 4 eighths and 8 sixteenths. And then 9 sixteenths, 5 eighths, which is the same as 10 sixteenths, 11 sixteenths, and then 3 fourths, which is the same as 12 sixteenths and 6 eighths, 13 sixteenths, 7 eighths, 15 sixteenths, and the whole number 4. In the video, he gave two measurements, 20 and 1 eighth and 13 and a half. And in between those two measurements, there was a space. And so what we need to know is what is the width of that space? And that's actually a subtraction of fractions. And so we need to subtract 20 and 1 eighth minus 13 and a half. So here's our problem written out vertically, 20 and 1 eighth minus 13 and a half. Here are my notes, 20 and 1 eighth minus 13 and a half. In my notes at the bottom, first I convert a half to an eighth, and I show that in a different video, but kind of quickly, um, one half is the same as four eighths. And so I cross out the half and 13 and a half and make that four eighths. And then I can't take one eighth minus four eighths, so I cross out the 20 and make it a 19 and borrow from it and make the 1 eighth a 9 eighths. And in my notes at the bottom, I show that when I cross out the 20 and make it a 19, it's like borrowing 1 from it, or when we're talking about eighths, 1 is actually 8 eighths. So I take 1 eighths plus 8 eighths equals 9 eighths. So 20 and 1 eighths is the same as 19 and 9 eighths. 
And now I can subtract. 9 eighths minus 4 eighths equals 5 eighths in my fractions column. And in my whole numbers column, 19 minus 13 is 6. So the width of that space is 6 and 5 eighths inches. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out John Wood's YouTube page on the web for more math videos.